Hey everybody, I'm back. It's Zira here. Um, I'm Zira Michelle, also known as Love of the Dark on Ravelry and on DeviantArt, which DeviantArt's not safe for work, so don't go there if you've got kiddos sitting around. I draw naked things, so there's that. <laughs> um, I'm Zira on Instagram, and that's three Z's, I-R, three A's. Um, I'm coming to you from Salem, Oregon, where I live with my partner and my son and our four cats, which is too many cats, but, you know, kittens are cute, so what are you going to do? Um, this is mostly a fiber arts channel, and um, occasionally I'll also talk about my other crafty endeavors. I make project bags for knitters. And oh, and I just recently got my Etsy store running it again. I had shut it down for a while. I, Etsy to me, it's kind of hit or miss. Just I don't know. And I felt like I was spending more on it than I was making. But of course, I wasn't really doing a lot with it. It just kind of sat there. So anyway, I'm also Love of the Dark on Etsy. So find me and see my pretty things. <laughs> um, let's see here. Um, mm -mm. Where was I at? project bags. Oh, I've got my Painted Day of the Dead critters, my Sugar Skull critters. Those are super fun. Um, all my stuff is kind of gothy and creepy. That's just kind of how I am. Piratey, you know. Um, anyway, today I wanted to talk first. I've got a lot to talk about today. I'm really unorganized and I haven't had any caffeine, so I'm kind of scatterbrained at the same time. I got a haircut. It's kind of screwed up and fantastic, right? I mean, it's really, it's odd. <laughs> anyway, sorry, I get stuck on my own haircut in the video. Um, I want to talk first about my Find Your Fade shawl. So I started this very glorious beast back in um, March 1st, actually, I started it. And I've been saying for the last couple of episodes, oh, I'm going to have it finished today. <laughs> I'm going to have it finished today. Today, I really mean it. I really mean it. I've got like that much left in it on it. I can totally do that in just a few minutes when I'm done with this. And then maybe I'll pop back in for a quick little two minute video to show you. But a couple of things happened and it's taken me this long and I, I should have been done weeks ago with it. But um, I'm eyeballing it. It's sitting over there looking at me going, knit me, knit me. Um, the first thing was, and I mentioned this last time, uh, I made a mistake in the pattern and I, I got super excited to finish it and forgot a whole chunk. <laughs> like that much of a chunk um, of the pattern. And so I had to frog back um, and kind of start that part over again. Because I'm not one of those people that's uh, riding by on a galloping horse type of it. Do you know what I mean by that? Like some people say, oh, if it's a mistake, if, if you can notice it riding by on a galloping horse, then you should probably change it. Otherwise, leave it. That works for some people. And sometimes I really envy those people that can do that. But if I make a mistake in my knitting, I, ha I have to rip back and fix it. I just can't. I'm not going to just leave it. That's the point of knitting. I don't know. I'm a process knitter, but I'm also a project knitter. Like I want the end project to be really beautiful and really stellar. And I want people to go, wow, that's really amazing. And not just like, oh, that's nice. You know, I don't know. I don't know. That's just me. That's no judgment against people who are galloping horse people. You're great. I just don't, I can't do that for me. So anyway, so I fixed the, I fixed the problem and I, started on the final color and I realized the first row that I knit I realized it was not the right color this color is not gonna work no Zira that yarn was so expensive just flip and use it oh my god just knit so I knit like probably six rows back and forth six six rows and I, I oh I was looking at it going it's not working this color against the final color the the second to final color was Madeline Tosh. Uh, it was a grenadine was the colorway. And it's, if you don't know grenadine, it's a kind of a mauvey sort of grayish pink. And it's got little flecks of like sky blue and little flecks of kind of a goldy orange. No, so not even goldy orange. It's really pale and faded and washed out. It's a very washed out looking color. It's really nice. But um, the color that I chose to end it with, I was hoping to kind of bring back some of the yellows and golds that I had used in another color previously. And that might have worked on the color before grenadine. But, and I'm sorry, right now my hair, oh, it's like making the background 
it's very bright. It's god awfully bright. And my camera's going, I don't know what to do with this. So my apologies. I, it'll fade next week. It'll be a little better. Anyway, back to the shawl. Speaking of fades. Um, it was not the right color. The last color was not the right color. And I, I unraveled it and I was like, I can't, I can't, this has to look right. This is, I put too much time and money into this damn thing for that last color to not be perfect. So uh, I was like, well, I'm just going to unravel it. I'm going to put that other yarn away. Who knows what I'll use that one for. But I ended up going down to Tangled Pearls, which is my, one of my local yarn shops. It's awesome. Awesome. Super friendly people that work in there. And there's almost always, every time I go in there, there's almost always a group of ladies sitting knitting in the little front area there. It's just a lovely place to be. And they have really beautiful yarn. Um, but I, I'm just like, oh, I've been looking for the final color for a long time. And I thought I had it with that last one. Didn't work. And what do I do? But I look up and right in front of me is this gorgeous skein of, I believe it's dream in color. I think it's a dream in color. Oh, I don't even remember. And I should have had the little label, but I forgot to grab it. I'll tell you for sure next episode, once I finally finish it and show it to you, I'll just rattle off all the colors then, but it's really beautiful. It's very soft and muted, and it's got just the tiniest little speckled hints of the color from the grenadine, from the Marie, uh, Madeline Tosh grenadine. So I was super happy to find that because I didn't think I was going to find something that was going to be perfect. I thought I was going to have to dye it myself, and I didn't have to. Not that I wouldn't mind dyeing it myself. I just don't have a lot of time right now for that. Sorry if you can hear the dog from next door. That damn thing barks all day because the people that own it don't take care of it. Urgh. Anyway, moving on, moving on. It will be done today. I've only got that much left to finish. So next thing. Oh, speaking of Tangled Pearls. Oh, I'm so excited. They are hosting a knit along and I'm super excited to join it. Um, I'm going to briefly show you this pattern. It is a paid for pattern, so I'm not going to show you the pattern, but I just want to show you the picture real quick. It's called the um, Goldfish Memory Shawl, and it's by Casapinka. I hope I'm saying that name right. C-A-S-A-P-I-N-K-A -A -A on Ravelry. And this is what it looks like. It's. I'm sorry that it's so blown out. It's hard to see. But basically, I want to read you the little blurb, and I'm sure that this is fine, because this doesn't tell you anything about like the pattern itself so much. But it says there's an urban legend that goldfish have an attention span slash memory of three seconds. The time it takes to circle the goldfish bowl. Sometimes I'm like a goldfish when knitting and I'm ready to move on to the next thing or color fairly quickly. This pattern is an excellent solution for those goldfish knitting moments when you want things to change fairly quickly. And that sounded so ideal after this find your fade. I love the find your fade. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure that I'll knit another or maybe two, but it is one thing and then one thing and then back and forth and back and forth. And it's, it gets a little monotonous after a while. Um, it's nice for sitting in front of the TV because you don't really don't have to think about what you're doing at all. Um, but this looks like each little individual section is totally different from the previous one. And that sounds so fun. And it's a three color shawl. And when I walked into Tangled Pearls, I saw the knit along table and all these bundles of three, like three bundles of yarn, your bundles of three yarns. And this one, and I will apologize in advance, you're not going to be able to tell the colors so well because this lighting in here is just washing everything out. But oh, wait, no, nope, that's going to work. <laughs> oh, my God. So the green that you're seeing is a whole lot brighter. It's a very, very neon chartreuse, okay? It's beautiful. It's neon chartreuse. This pink that you're seeing is a little warmer in person. It's a little cool on this video I'm finding, but they look really great together. And then the third color has, oh, what the heck? <laughs> not that, that's not what it looks like. Oh, there we go. Has the, uh, the pink and it's also got some of the green and then it's also got some blues and purples and stuff, but it's mostly gray. The, it's, they're all Madeline Tosh twist light. And this, the gray is called Nighthawk. <laughs> the pink is called Coquette. Saucy little Coquette. And the green is called Grasshopper, which it should have been called Chartreuse because that's what, what, that's really what color it is. It's a very bright Chartreuse. So that's going to be, that's going to be my goldfish shawl. And I'm super, super excited to start that. Um, pretty soon here. I still need to finish the um, Doodlebug Shawl by Lynette Graham. 
and I plan on doing that next week. Um, so there's that. I'm going to put these out of the way for a moment so I can go on to other things. <sighs> I have a shop that I want to tell you about. Um, I got my taxes back. <laughs> and decided to go on a spree. I needed a blending board. I have I've not had a blending board and I didn't want to attempt to make one myself. I know people um, people get some kind of special glue and staples and a cutting board and carding cloth and they make their own for half or less the price of of you know a company made blending board but I uh, 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 I've got enough on my plate. I don't need to be trying to do that too. So I just bought a blending board. It's in Ashford. Very nice. It's beautiful. It came with the little brush and the dowels and everything. So that was exciting. And from the same shop that I bought that blending board from, she also has everything. <laughs> She's got any wool you can imagine. She's got alpaca and llama and silks in a dozen flavors. She's got all the Angelinas and fire stars and all that. Just everything you, that a, a spinner could want. <laughs> and I like to make fiber bats and I like to make roll eggs and now I can do that easily. Um, in fact, I did. Anyway, this gal's name is Jody, and she has the Slim Chicken Etsy shop. I highly recommend you go there. Her stuff is beautiful. Um, the just everything, the colors, the fibers. There isn't a fiber you can't find there, I don't think. Um, so I ordered a bunch of fibers from her in addition to that blending board. And when you buy a blending board from her, you get a $10 coupon for for extra stuff. Well, I was feeling adventurous and I, I told her, I'm like, you know, I don't really know how to choose. I mean, you've got so much beautiful stuff. How about you just surprise me, throw in something you think would be fun. I'm kind of an adventurous spinner and, you know, new, relatively new to blending. Um, I mean, I, I blend on a hackle, you know, I use a hackle and disc for my roll eggs, but, or for my, um, rovings, but the whole blending board thing is a new thing for me. So she ended up sending just a bunch of goodies. And some of that was uh, like silk, sorry, silk threads that are just in a bunch of different colors. It's, just, it's amazing. I was super impressed with what she chose for me. And so I super highly recommend going there. And I'll probably go there again when I'm done with this video because there's a few more things I want. <laughs> anyway, I got my stuff two days later, literally two days later. It was like flash fast. And I was playing with it. And on the day that I got it, it had been really, really bright and sunny, but you could see coming in from the distance, you could see those black gray clouds coming in. And when that happens, it's one of my favorite things. It's from childhood, even like one of my favorite colors or scenes to look at is when the sun is behind you shining on those really dark black clouds. And then you've got the beautiful green trees that just stand out like, like the color chartreuse against the black sky, right? It's absolutely gorgeous. So look what I made. And again, you're probably not going to be able to see it very well. I'm going to I'm going to turn this one light off. Give me just a second here. Come here, light. I'm going to turn you down for a minute and see. Please don't fall. Let's see if this is any better. A little bit. So in reality, this green is actually a really nice chartreuse bright green. And it kind of goes all the way up. We have the the gray, that really dark gray sky, and I've got some puffy white clouds in there, and that puffy white is Angora. <laughs> so nice. This is, um, it's got Merino and Polworth and Angora and some Tessa silk and a little bit of Sari silk for some uh, additional interest in there. So those turned out really lovely. I made a whole bunch of them. There's, there's another one. Made a bunch. And then I also made... Um, another one that I'm, oh, that one's called, um, incoming storm. Cause that's what it looks like. This next one I made. So a minute ago, Starbucks had this unicorn frappe thing. Okay. And I got super excited cause it's really cute. And it looked like the cover of the nine inch nails. Uh, I think it was head like a hole or whatever one that was. Anyway, it looked like the cover of that. And that was neat. And I was like, Oh yay! It's like a gothy unicorn. I want to go get one. And we went down to get one and they were like, we don't have any more. And I was like, you just ran out of frappe. You, you ran out. Yeah, we ran out. Okay. And then I read online a bunch of different places. How I'm going to fix this again. How, um, 
these freaking baristas are bitching and moaning that they have to make these unicorn frappes all day. And if I have to see another unicorn frappe, I'm just going to kill myself. So I was like, oh, this is like a suicidal gothy unicorn. So I took those colors of that frappe, which is that sort of dark gray blue. And uh, I'm sorry, it's so washed out. You're not, it's, this is not what it looks like. But basically it's a dark gray blue, a very bright uh, pink. And then there's a bunch of sparkle in there. And there's some Angora and some beautiful Angelina sparkle and some sorry silk. <laughs> and it looks like that damn frappe that nobody wants to, nobody wants to make for me. So I never got to have one. I'm kind of bummed out. I really wanted to, oh, I'm sorry guys, you can't see it. I'll get my lighting figured out one of these days. Or maybe I won't. I don't know. I'm going to try to for sure, but I'm not a lighting expert. Maybe it's because my hair is so bright. Maybe this thing is literally blowing out because of my hair. I don't feel like I did this last week. And I have the same lighting that I had last week. It's just, I don't know. who knows? Anyway, so there's that. I got all that stuff, all of that fiber I got from her shop and I'm super, super excited about it. Um, made a bag or two. Did I show this already? I feel like I showed this last week. I think I did. I'm gonna throw it. It's just one of those cute little origami fold bags. The thing I didn't have last week is this. So remember how I was saying, oh my gosh, you guys help me out. I don't know how to make a lined bag. I figured it out. Fully lined square bag. Super awesome. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Everything is so blue. I hate this light. I'm going to tell you that right now. I, I mean, I love this light for knitting. It's really bright and it's really nice, but <clears throat> that's not any better. Whatever. Okay. So moving on. Oh, <laughs> bear with me guys. Don't leave me yet. I'm almost finished. I swear. Yeah, so I figured it out. Um, I found a really nice tutorial online um, where she actually talked about the video that I'd found originally and how she was frustrated because it wasn't fully lined. The inside of it was raw. There was raw edges on the inside and it was no bueno. And so um, she figured out how to do it and shared it with the world. And I'm so sorry. Oh, you know what? I will find the information and I'll post it in the show notes that will be on my blog, which is darkly domestic at blogspot.com. I'll put that info there um, so that you can also make a fully lined bag if you don't know how. You probably already know how. You're probably smarter than me. But anyway, that was super cute. Um, let's see. I think there was one more thing. There was basically one more thing. I'm making, these will be on Ravelry soon. When I get them all finished, I'm going to publish them all at the same time. But I am making a design for zodiac squares for, you know, it's a motif. So like each square will be like one of these guys where there's dirt, 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 but not crochet. It'll be kind of thing. So this is the first one. Oh, just a brief peek is all you get. Capricorn, of course, because I am a Capricorn. So naturally I would start with that. Not to mention that's the beginning of the year anyway, but Capricorn, that's my first one. And it will be, I'll, make it all nice and neat, of course, so that it's readable, but that'll be the first one. And then I'll do 12 of them and then I will publish them. I'm super excited. That will be my first official Ravelry pattern uh, or group of patterns. So that'll be fun. Yay. Um, other than that, I think that's all I have to talk about today. Um, oh, this is a really short video. Hmm. Maybe just talk more about my hair. I don't know. No. We don't need to do that. <laughs> anyway, do feel free to join my Ravelry group. It is small, but it is growing, and I'm trying to find it. There we go. It is the Love of the Dark Fiber Arts group on Ravelry. Please feel free to join us and jump in and chat and share your stuff. And if you have a blog, please share it there so that other people can find you if they don't already you know, know where you're at. Um, when I get like maybe 20 members in there, I'll do some little giveaway or something. That'll be kind of fun. Um, and we'll start like a, we'll start a knit along or a crochet along or something. Um, thank you for stopping by. Um, thanks for coming back. If you're a viewer, a regular viewer, and thanks for coming by and checking it out. If you're a new viewer and all that. Um, yeah, I, I've droned on enough for the moment. 
So I hope you have a really great day and have a really great week and we'll see you next week.